Now here we are at the rear suspension. We're shooting from the rear on the left rear, shooting toward the front of the car. So we have the shock absorber here. Here's our brake rotor, caliper, and the hub assembly with the shock mount. Now on the three series cars, the shock and the spring over here are separate. So we remove them separately. We're going to first undo the bottom mounting bolt for the shock. Note we have a jack uh, supporting the hub assembly and control arms. Normally when this is drooping all the way, the shock will be stopping the downward movement. When we remove this bolt, the uh, control arm assembly and the hub would normally drop a couple of inches. So we put a jack under it and just put a very slight amount of lift on it from the static down position. That way it'll be supported when we pull the bolt out. So let's go ahead and do that. There we go. Perfect height. So this is all set. Now the shock is secured at the top through the shock mount and the shock mount is secured to the body with two studs and nuts. We'll go into the trunk and show you that. In order to do so, we have to lower the car. We'll lower the jack and let this just hang at its normal position, which will be fine. All right, here we are in the trunk. Uh, we are going to be going after, we're on the driver's side, we're going to remove this trim panel to access the top of the shock, which is behind here. Now, on the driver's side, first we have to remove this tray in order to remove the panel, as well as the tail light uh, bulb socket. So we'll remove that. This has a pinch clip on it. Right here, we just pinch it, pull it off, we'll move it aside. And we have the common BMW push rivets. One, two, three, four. I believe that's all there is on this one. And we'll use our plastic non-marring pry tools to pull up the center of the rivets so we can pull them out. And you can see the base is still there. That may come out with the rivet. It may not. At this point, it is ready for removal, though. It's loose. We'll go ahead and take that out so we don't lose it. But uh, you've seen these in our other videos. The clamp part and the center part. When the center goes in, it expands the clamp so it stays in place. Very similar to a molly or a toggle bolt that you would use in a wall. Here's our second one that came out all together. We have one here. And what we're doing, remember, we're just getting under the head of the center piece, not the complete rivet. This rivet is still in the panel. We'll let that stay there if it wants to. And we have one back here. Okay, now we have all of our rivets out. We're going to pull this panel out. It does take a little bit of work to get it out from this area here. Just push and pull, work this edge down to pull it out. Now we have our trim panel pushed all the way aside. Here's a sound deadening panel. Now, this we would like to just pull out of place, but this stuff is very brittle. If we try moving it, it's gonna rip wherever we try moving it. So we're actually just going to break into it at the top here rather than tear the sides all apart. Uh, we are on the other side we found that trying to move this panel just tore it up uh, it, it won't come out in one piece so you can hopefully see here here's our upper mount we have one nut here and one nut here those secure the mount up into the tower we'll take these two nuts off these are 13 millimeter and drop the whole assembly down and then the shock will be totally free. We'll disassemble the shock from the mount with it off the car. So we'll take this, and these are uh, 13 millimeter, and we'll remove these nuts. Okay, now I am ready to loosen this last nut. I have a helper holding the shock from below because it will physically just drop right out at this point. You could either let it drop or put a jack under it to secure it. But we have a helper holding and he can lower it down through now. There we go. And uh, totally out of the car at this point. Now we'll disassemble that unit, new shock, new mount, and we'll be ready to go back in. Here we have our new Bilstein shock 
and the old assembly. Now, if we were just putting a new shock in, we would purchase a new mount. We would reuse this upper washer and lower washer. We would also repurchase a shock installation kit, which would give us this bumper, which is the compression bumper, and the dust tube to protect the shock shaft from uh, dirt and dust. Take this nut off to get the mount and the washers off. This nut from the shaft, we can hold the shaft with a wrench here. It's got two flats to loosen the nut and pull it off. In this case, we're installing this complete Bilstein assembly. Now, this is the PSS-10. Here's our adjuster, which is on the bottom. And you'll notice the dust boot is also on the bottom of the shock versus the top, like the old one. So this shock is basically upside down compared to the original. Now, instead of reusing the lower washer, which you'll notice is cupped away from the mount, that's very important on the stock installation, the cup is going downward. Instead of that washer, we have this washer, which comes with the Bilstein on first, then our new mount, and then a new gasket. This goes between the mount and the body. And perhaps maybe see a little better if we do this. So we have the mount and the gasket. And then we do need to remove this washer from the original and put it up top here. We'll take this over to the bench, hold the flats with a wrench, and remove the nut just to get this top washer off so we can reuse it. And there we go, we're nice and tight. Remove the Allen. And the wrench. This is ready to install with the gasket on. Now you'll notice this plate here. This is a reinforcing plate. This actually goes up above on top here before we put the nuts on. That's to help keep this sheet metal area from cracking. These vehicles do have a history of cracking the sheet metal where the nuts, uh, the studs come through. So we'll install that after the shock is in. We'll have our helper insert the shock from below. All right, now we have our studs coming up through the holes and we'll slide the reinforcing plate on. Make sure the insulation isn't underneath the plate at all. Down onto the studs. We'll start our nuts and then tighten them down evenly. Okay, and there is our two nuts are tight. We'll just do the best we can with this insulation to keep it in the general area. Do a little bit of its job. And we will grab the trim panel, work it back into place, put our rivets back in. We'll go back underneath. We'll take care of the spring and reattach the bottom of the shock. Here we are back under the vehicle at the suspension. Now we have our shock installed. It's still loose at the bottom here. We just have the top mount done. We still have the stock spring in place. Now again, if all you're doing is shocks, you're ready to reassemble, put the bolt together, and you're done down here. But we're installing the lowering, adjustable height lowering springs to go with the Bilstein PSS-10. So we're going to remove the spring. Now in this case, with the shock removed, I can simply pull down on the suspension arm here and pull the spring right out of place. I don't need a compressor. Here's our lower spring pad and our upper pad. Okay, now we're ready to install the new spring. This is the new spring, and this is the adjustable mount. You can see the collar threads to change the ride height. We have the rubber spring seat between the mount and the chassis, and we've reinstalled the rubber spring seat on the bottom as well. Now this mount goes on the top here, so we'll be mounted like this. For the moment, I'm first going to put the mount up on the top here and just push it into place. Now I've got this nylon spacer. I'm going to have to keep track of that. Now I'm going to have my helper pulled down on the suspension arm so we can fit the spring into place. We'll first get it on at the bottom. Got our nylon piece. Go ahead, pull down right up there, and we're in place. That's all there is to it. This is all set. Now we've got our spring installed. We've installed the bolt on the shock. 
Remember the outer washer on the bolt to keep the shock from pushing off its bushing over the bolt head. We're tight here, springs installed. All that's left is to lower the vehicle and adjust our ride height. Now, there is no specific starting point. We've started this vehicle with the height adjusted full high on both the front and the rear as a starting point. Now, that should bring us about to stock, maybe a little bit lower. Once we put the car down, roll it back and forth to get rid of any uh, camber in the arms. We'll see what the ride height is. If we want to go down a half an inch or an inch, we'll start working our adjusters. Keep in mind, if you want to go an inch, we'll move the adjusters less than an inch because our, our point here is inboard from the wheel. So think of the fulcrum inside, the point of adjustment, and the wheel. So we'll be doing something less than an inch if we want to lower an inch, for instance. This will be simply trial and error, setting the car down, rolling it, measuring our height all the way around the vehicle, coming back, lifting up. Unfortunately, we have to take the wheel off, change our adjustment, go back. Once we have it, though, we're set and we don't have to change that anymore. The shock adjustment is right down here, or actually, uh, where is it? I can't feel it. Right here on the bottom and on the front it's on the bottom so we can change our shock adjustment at any time without disassembling any wheels or anything so with that we'll get our wheels on we'll lower the vehicle we'll see where we're at and go from there on final adjustment now that you've seen that this is an installation you can do yourself don't forget that all of the parts and the specialty tools you've seen us use are available in our online store at bavauto.com Remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Now thanks for watching and let's go ahead and get on to our next video.